By this point, it's too late. I've been through this so many times before and it ends with me getting my money. My name's Stephen Bridges, I'm a magician turned card counter and today I shall be telling you about and showing you the weirdest experience I've ever had counting cards. I'll also be sharing with you something truly excellent that somebody sent me. For ages I was umming and ahhing about whether or not to include this in a video because I'm a little bit worried that someone might try and sue me. However, I've decided to include it, so please don't sue me. It was my last day on a month-long trip in Washington State playing blackjack. I'd fumbled my way through, counting cards at various casinos and getting backed off a fair few times. Turns out, casinos don't like winners. Who knew? Right now, if you search on YouTube for counting cards, my face shows up pretty quick. But at the time, when I was on the trip, my number one priority was to keep my identity secret. This led to me declining to show my ID to casinos when cashing out chips, which is perfectly legal and fine. As a result, a couple of casinos flat out refused to cash me out. One called the police, who thankfully sided with me. Another relented when I insisted they had no legal reason to refuse to cash me out, and they gave me my money. There were only a couple of cases where I did show my ID, and these were in very specific situations, it was a bit of a judgement call, and in those situations I was pretty confident that the casino had not stored my information. I walked into Elan A and there were a lot of blackjack tables. It was the perfect level of being not quiet, but not too busy either. Because there were so many tables, I decided to employ a card counting strategy known as wonging out. Anytime the count went negative, I'd get up and go and play at a different table. Doing this means I'm avoiding the negative shoes, where the casino has more of an advantage than usual. This means I'm saving money and therefore making more money. After about an hour and 20 minutes of playing at various tables, I got up and started walking to find another table. I then heard someone say, Excuse me, sir. They didn't have my accent. I just, I'm not gonna do an American accent. I kept walking, pretending I didn't hear him as I fumbled to turn on my hidden camera. Unfortunately, the camera didn't click on, so for this bit of the video, you're just gonna have to enjoy my dramatic retelling of events. I do have hidden camera footage in a bit though. The man repeats himself loud enough that I can't pretend that I didn't hear him, so I turn around. He said, excuse me, sir, can I see your ID, please? Casinos will sometimes ID players when they enter the casino. This is a smart thing to do, as you can check that everybody in the casino is old enough to legally gamble. Sometimes casinos will just ID you when you get to the table. Also a pretty smart thing to do, you can check that the person is old enough before they start gambling. But so far in my experience a casino had never ID'd me when I was just walking around the casino unless they knew I was counting cards. It's just an odd and inefficient moment to ask for someone's ID. But the weird thing is, is that so far in the session, I'd had an unusual amount of negative shoes. The count had never gone high enough to justify me changing my bet size, which is the number one thing that surveillance are looking for for card counters, so it would be almost impossible at this point to pin me as a card counter. It dawned on me that perhaps the casino had already been sent my photo from another casino and they recognised me and knew I was counting. I ask the man why I'm being ID'd and he explains it's a spot check. No way is it a spot check, but okay. At this point I see a police officer and a woman stood only a few feet away watching the interaction and I say, doesn't look like a spot check. The police officer and the woman walk over and then the whole situation goes from 0 to 100 real quick. The cop says to me, I need to see your ID and he said it in a very aggressive tone. I can't really do it justice in the retelling, but he was not in a pleasant mood. When someone comes in at a 10 and you're at a 3, it's very hard to get that person to a 3 and you're never going to have a productive conversation when someone's at a 10. Also, did the casino call the cops on me when they saw me, which seems like massive overkill for the situation, or was there already a cop on duty? I wasn't really sure. The only other thing that worried me, and I haven't mentioned this in other videos, but many casinos, including Elan A, are on Indian reservations. Long story short regarding tribal casinos and Indian reservations, just for the sake of how it relates to this video, it means that it's quite likely that the casino is directly or indirectly funding the police force. Now, I wasn't expecting the cop to be corrupt. However, if the casino is paying your wages, then maybe you're going to show a little bit more loyalty to the casino. In my most calm, I'm just a simple man from England voice that I could muster, I cautiously said, 
I prefer not to give the casino my ID. As far as I'm aware, I don't legally need to show them my ID. I would just like to cash out my chips and leave, please. You can't cash out your chips without ID. Show me your ID. I really don't think that I'm exaggerating how this guy was talking to me. It was intense. And a personal pet hate of mine is when people use anger as a means to get you to comply with a request. I said, I honestly don't want to be difficult, officer, but I'm legally entitled to cash out my chips and I don't need to show ID to do so. Midway through that sentence, he cuts me off with, look, you can't be here without ID. We can't even have this conversation in here while you don't have ID. You need to go outside now. So the four of us, yep, there's two of the casino staff involved in this, we all go outside and right outside the main entrance to Elan A, we continue to have this conversation. I've since realized that one of those staff members was actually part of the gaming commission who are supposed to stay impartial and act as an intermediary between the casino and the player. They're actually the people I'm supposed to call if my money gets withheld or if I have some kind of conflict with the casino. So. That was reassuring. The officer takes the aggression level down from a nine to around about a six as he explains that the casino have informed him that they've previously trespassed me from the property. Now, as far as I understand it, and I'm sure that lawyers will correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, you can't be trespassed from a property that you've never been to. Or perhaps more accurately, you can't be trespassed from a place if you've never been informed that you've been trespassed. Given that I'd never been to this casino before, never been to any other properties that it may have, and never been read the Trespass Act, there's no way I was trespassed from this casino. I said, that's impossible, I've never been here before. The cop said, well, they've got your name and your photo on that piece of paper, which means you're trespassing. At this point, I was aware there's no way that I was gonna be able to keep playing at this casino, no matter how the situation was resolved. So my new priority became getting my chips cashed out without giving over my name. Given that I was leaving the country the next day, giving over my name probably wouldn't have had any consequences that would have really affected me, at least in the short term. But on principle, I didn't wanna let a casino bully me into giving over my name. I thought the casino was actively, deliberately lying to the police officer to get him to force me to give over my ID. I was also just so done with this BS of casinos hiding their motives and me hiding my motives and everyone doing this weird little dance where everyone's lying and no one's saying what they really mean. I said, let me just be honest here. I'm counting cards, they don't like it. They've probably got my photo from another casino, but there's no way they have my name and there's no way I've been trespassed here because I've literally never been here before. I looked at the casino staff as I said this and they didn't react, which sort of confirmed that I hadn't said anything that they didn't know already. But this was the moment that the cop's whole demeanor just totally shifted. He was at a six for anger and then he just was cruising at a two. He asked if he could speak with me privately for a moment. So me and the cop just took a few steps to the side. I'm telling you now, the cop was like a different person. And this wasn't a good cop, bad cop act. Something that I'd said had clearly changed his whole perspective of the situation. He definitely wasn't acting or putting this on. He told me that he thinks card counting is really cool and that he admires what it takes to do it, etc. He was being sincere. And at this point I thought maybe the casino had told him that I was a really aggressive guy that had previously got into fights or something like that. But now he's just realizing I'm just some bearded British bloke that's just trying to win at blackjack. He suggested that I showed him my ID and that he would then check the document that they had and confirm to them whether or not I'm the same person. He said that he would not give them my name unless it matched the name that they already had. I know a few people watching this will think, don't give the cop your name, you cannot trust him. And you're right, I can't trust him. I can't guarantee he's not gonna screw me over in a moment, but just like Blackjack in this situation, I'm having to place a bet on what I think the most likely scenario is, and what is gonna help me. And I thought I had a pretty good read on this guy. And I was quickly weighing up my options. If I didn't do that, it was maybe unlikely I'd get my chips cashed out, in which case I'd have to come back another day on a different shift perhaps and try and cash them out. I couldn't do that because I was flying back the next day, so I really wanted to get that sorted then. If I ended up with chips on my way home, I didn't know what I would do with them, if I'd ever get them cashed out. Didn't wanna fly all the way back just to cash them out. If I was sticking around in the US, for a bit longer, maybe I would have handled it differently. But probably not, I was kind of naive. And by the end of this story, I think we'll have a very good idea of whether or not the cop did betray my trust and tell them. I show him my ID, he takes a look, we walk back over, he asks to see the document explaining that he will verify if it's me or not and that he's seen my name. He then takes a look at the document that they've got. He then has a little look at me, looks back at the document, folds it up, hands it back to them and says, it's not him. This was a lovely moment because the, the woman from the gaming commission, if she'd had a little sip of drink, she would have spat it out. She was like, what? 
It's not him. It looks a lot like him, but this guy's better looking, and besides, he's got a different name. It's not the same card counter. The cop was just starting to crack up at this moment. The absurdity of this situation was dawning on me, on the cop, and maybe slowly on the casino staff. I just want to take another moment to emphasize that this police officer was one of the more angry people I've come across in my life, and then he'd flipped over to just being like jokey as if we were mates. It was so strange. The gaming commissioner had no idea what to say. She did not see this coming. Eventually she said, well, okay, you can, you can go back inside then. <laughs> it then dawned on me what an absolute fool I'd been in this situation. I said, wait a second, you've spoken to me because I look like the card counter that you've trespassed from the property. And I've admitted that I'm counting cards. By chance, you've picked out the one person in your casino that's counting cards. And as I say, I've admitted it. And now you're telling me that I can just walk back in the casino and continue to play. The other man chimed in saying something to the effect of, well, we were told to investigate this. You're not the guy, so our job is done, so you can carry on. I was just laughing a little bit manically at this situation. There was just no way that they were gonna let me play. No way. So I said, I've just told you I'm counting cards. Are you telling me that you're not gonna just call your supervisor, your, your surveillance guy, your pit boss, whoever it is, and immediately tell them that I'm counting cards? And he said, as I said, our job is done. So I shook the cop's hand, wished him well, and went back in the casino. I immediately went to the restroom and I did the laziest but most effective costume change that I could at the moment. I took my hat off and took my hoodie off. Totally unrecognizable person, right? I figured maybe if the surveillance guy hadn't watched me come back in, that might buy me five minutes at the table before I was recognized. I find a table in a different place to where I've been playing previously, sit down and start playing. And 10 minutes later, a woman comes over to me and you guessed it, she asked to see my ID. At this point, I got the hidden camera working and here's what happened. Finish my hand and then yeah, we'll absolutely me. 21, 21. There we go. Um, could you colour me up? Because I feel like this Absolutely. might be... So I'd very much like to see your ID. So... And I'm also here to tell you that based on a business decision, we're going to only allow you to play the table minimum on our blackjack game. Okay. So you're more than welcome to play any of the games that you'd like. It's just on blackjack. It will be table minimum. So table minimum at all times? And that's that? At all times. Okay. Sure. I think I'm done then. Are you done? Yeah. Would you like to play a different game? We have craps, roulette, high gal? Maybe. I might have a wonder. May I have a look at your ID, please? So, you're aware I've been spoken to already? Oh, yeah. So you're aware I've already been age checked? Oh yeah. So now you want to look at my ID again for what reason? Well, because I wasn't on ship when this happened. And I'd like to know your name. Ten minutes ago. Well, I guess I'm ten minutes behind the game today. <sighs> so unfortunate, okay. I'd like it noted. No, actually, I would like it officially on the record. Can we get a record where we can have this officially stated that the woman was asking for my ID because she wanted my name? Nothing to do with checking my age. No concern with me being old enough to gamble. She's aware that I'm old enough to gamble. It's been verified by other people. I know I'm largely preaching to the choir here, but I've had the odd person say to me, well, the casino is just checking your age. That's why they wanted your ID randomly when you were coming out of the restroom or whatever. But in this situation, we know that that's not the case because she admitted to wanting my ID so that she could get my name. This shows the casino's true intention, but actually I do respect that she was being honest. I can't believe you have someone in your system that looks just like me. Evidently we do. I know. I apologize for that. No, <laughs> I don't apologize for that. Uh, thank you so much for dealing. I'm well, sure you're better looking. That's what the police officer said, which was very flattering. Um, Are you going to tell me your name or not today, huh? Well, could you give me an honest reason for why you actually want my name? Like, a, like the real reason? The real reason is I'm going to put it in my uh, report tonight that I had to talk to you and uh -huh. ask you to only play minimum. Uh, well, for what purpose? That's my honest answer. I know it is. Well, can I push it slightly more? What, for what reason do, I, uh, do you want me to only play minimum? It's a business decision. A business decision based on thinking it's unwise to let me play maximum? It's a business decision, yeah. It's always really strange to me that casinos say this phrase, it's a business decision. In fact, they seem to really avoid saying counting cards as a thing at all. By the way, and I've mentioned this previously in videos, but it's worth repeating here again, if you are a card counter, having a prolonged conversation with the casino staff about the fact that you're a card counter or just prolonging the conversation is not in your best interest. 
You ideally want to be forgotten. You don't want to be memorable and having these chats just makes you more memorable. But with these videos specifically, I want to show an insight into how casinos think, how they operate. So I push it a little bit further or quite a bit further than it would be smart to do. Hence engaging in this rather pointless, but kind of interesting conversation. I love how these conversations are always so like, <laughs> the, the irony is, is that I had a very, um, Blunt conversation, not blunt as in rude, but just like a very cards on the table conversation outside. And that conversation seems to have cost me dearly. Um, all right, well, I, I prefer not to because I don't like my personal okay. information being stored on the day. But I'm actually going home tomorrow, and my flight's tomorrow, so I'll, I'll never be back here anyway. Well, that's um, <laughs> well, maybe it's fortunate. I'm not sure where you're flying home to. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> uh, where's the cash desk? The cash store. You have to leave. <laughs> you just told me I can't play blackjack. That's not true. I said that you cannot play anything other than table minimum. So did your uh, gaming supervisor speak to you when I came back in, or what will happen out of curiosity? I'm not. I, I'm, I'm just intrigued. I don't. I don't tend to have a conversation this frank about it. Um, so I'm just intrigued by it. I'm not. I, I can't use this information. I, I can't come back here. I'm just intrigued. Did they just come and go? Oh yeah, this guy. He's not the guy, but you don't want to play. He's not the guy, but based on uh, your play today, they have made a decision to only allow you to bet minimum. But that was based off either the security guard or the gaming person telling you that, right? Um, they said they wouldn't say a few, Those are a few of those. That was part of it, yeah. That's all you need, though, right? There wasn't any more of it. Did the police officer say anything? No, not to me. I can't believe that this is how that came about. So that's so because somebody looks like me. That's <laughs> so we, funny. We go through this all night long. To yeah. Be honest with you. We yeah, really yeah. Do. And it's nothing that goes out. It, everything, all info stays in house. Yeah. So it's uh, not like it gets destroyed. Well, but anyway, thank you very much. Have a lovely day. Thanks again. Thank you. I can't believe it. Oh. And just when I thought I'd be able to cash out with no issues. This happened. How are you? I'm all right, thank you. How are you? Pretty good. 16, 17, 15. Do you have ID? Uh, no. Are you being serious? Well, I've, I've just had a very long and elaborate conversation with your security, etc. Uh, I don't want to give my ID over. I literally just have to make sure you're old enough. Uh, they know I'm old enough. So, we need to see ID then. We've just been through this. I've already been ID'd by a staff member to check my age, and now you're doing it again? Crashing out. If you would like, if we check your ID to make sure you're the right age, yeah. we can give you a bracelet to make no, so I mean, people I, don't ask for your ID anymore. But um, we have to have your ID to be able to, to verify your that you're 21. But this is so unnecessary. By this point, it's too late. Like, the, the money is legally mine, so I know where I stand legally on this. I don't want to make this difficult, but I don't want to call a lawyer. I've been through this so many times before, and it ends with me getting my money. Uh, you know I'm over 21. You know I'm over 21. I don't know that. Okay, you're, I, I really don't the know casino that. know that I'm over 21. So here's what happened. I got pulled to one side because they thought I was someone that was banned from the premises. I didn't want to show my ID. Ended up showing it to the cop. The cop verified it wasn't me. Uh, and in that process, now they don't want me to play, which is fine, but I just want my money and I want to leave, and I, I don't legally need to provide my ID. I know how this works. Well, but when you walk in the door, there is a sign, must present ID upon passing. But that's a policy, not a law, so I can that, reject that policy. A policy it's a policy, not a law. We can reject chips, too. You, not legally, you, you've got my, that's my money. What's he, what's he at? I'm not, I'm not giving 16, way below 10K. It's below 10 grand. I know where I stand on this. I don't want to make this difficult. I just, I don't like my ID being in databases. Go ahead and get your boss. Uh, Go ahead and get your boss. Uh, I'm just going to do this. And I'm, I can't check your ID. I don't want to show ID. Well, I don't want the information to get out of this casino. So like I said, it's going to stay in-house. Your name's not going to go anywhere. We're the only place for miles. So it's not like Vegas where there's somewhere right down the but, street.
I've had a few casinos say to me that my information would remain in-house, that it's guarded, that it can't get out, despite the fact that information can be leaked in all sorts of ways. And in this case, I don't know that Elane share information with other casinos. However, if I were a gambling man, I would place a very large bet on the fact that they share information about card counters with other casinos. Now, whether or not this man knows that or not is another matter, but him so confidently saying that, when I don't think it's true, is not good. See what I mean? I get what you're saying. I, I know where I stand legally on this, and I know that if I... I've already been ID'd because they thought I was somebody else, and then they checked that, and they were like, oh, you're not the person that we banned from this premises. Uh, so I don't like my I don't want my information being stored in credit. I'm not cashing out over ten grand. He just wants to see your ID. I don't. I don't. I told him that. I told him. I've already. I've already had. The, I've already had. Well, I have to leave anyway. I've already had this checked, and I don't want my ID being my information being stored on the data. I don't mind if the legit reason was to check on twenty one, but the casino knows I'm over twenty one, and I don't look under twenty one. Okay. So can do I give these back to him? Well, it can't be withheld. So. In this situation, we have caught one of the many moments over the course of this trip where I have been totally incorrect. In this case, the casino can withhold the chips if they have some kind of dispute with me, and then they'll give me like a receipt, and then I have to take that receipt to gaming. I can get them chips back, but that whole process can take weeks. So I confidently think in this situation, there's no way I'm not walking out with my money, but really, they could have withheld the money. Thank you. Thankfully, I got my money, I didn't show ID, and I lived to card count another day. Not that I was ever going to get murdered in this situation. The fact that the pit boss and that man and the cash desk were all asking for my ID makes me feel pretty confident that the cop didn't betray me and give over my information. So thank you cop. On to the thing that I mentioned at the beginning of the video that I'm a little bit worried about showing you because of legal repercussions but I'm going to show you anyway. However I'm going to leave you on a little bit of a cliffhanger whilst I tell you about the sponsor of this video blackjackapprenticeship.com slash question mark Stephen. If you want to learn to count cards or if you're already learning to count cards I'd highly recommend BJA. Although you can learn yourself with a book and a deck of cards there are some major limitations. For example if you're training and you make a mistake you might not realize you've made a mistake. Whereas if you use the blackjack apprenticeship training suite and you say decide that you're going to stand on your hard 12 against a three when the true count is lower than a true two it will tell you off for doing that i mean it won't like they won't scold you it's not like an aggressive piece of software but it will correct you i routinely use their software to stay sharp and keep my game solid as well as the software they have a really good video course that goes into quite a lot of detail about how to count cards but they also don't like teach you in a way that's really complicated or in a way that's kind of patronizingly simple. They have that balance really good. They also have the pro betting software, which I really don't know what I'd do without, as well as Casino 411, which is what I personally use to find casinos that I can count cards at. This saves long drives to casinos that don't even have a playable blackjack game. I will say, and this isn't the smartest thing to say in an ad, but it isn't cheap. If you're interested in learning to count cards, but you're not quite sure, then I wouldn't dive in with BJA. I would just get a book and a deck of cards and see if it really captivates you. I love card counting, but it has a lot of downsides, which is why I don't really recommend learning to count cards unless you're really gripped by the idea and you feel like you have to do it. If that's you, joining Blackjack Apprenticeship, in my opinion, is the most effective way to learn, and despite not being cheap, is very much worth the money. Please use the URL Blackjack Apprenticeship dot com slash question mark Stephen to support the channel. During the posting of these videos, I had a subscriber send to me my profile on one of these casino databases that they share with other casinos. Now, I presume this person works in the casino industry, otherwise you couldn't get a login to access this image, but they sent it to me and they've given me permission to show you it. So here is 
my card counter profile. Unidentified male 1183 was observed in a Washington casino and determined to be an advantage player. UM 1183 was backed off from further play and left the property in a red sedan with this license plate. <laughs> I don't know why I love this so much, but this has inspired me to update my Twitter and my Instagram profiles. It's looking like I might be able to go full-time YouTube, which means potentially a lot more card counting trips and videos from me. I do want to thank my Patreons for helping make that happen, because even though you know ad revenue is a thing, if you could see the graph, it's it's so volatile, and Patreon support really gives like a level of safety that makes me feel a little bit less daunted. Daunted? It, it feels safer to try and make this an actual career and be able to document more of these crazy adventures. So thank you very much if you are supporting me on Patreon. I've got lots more in the pipeline, including a massive team trip to Las Vegas with a huge bankroll that was, it was just a lot to experience. I don't know, like it was a stressful time, but it was also, yeah, it was wild. So I think you're gonna like that video when it comes out. More stuff in the meantime, and I'll see you soon.